American-born but German youth international Fabian Hertzler has done more in terms of football in his 31 years than I have in my lifetime. God, I'm old. This tactic is called, actually, it's called 505 Hertzler Edition uh, 4, but on here you'll see that it's also called a 523 Hertzler Edition. Hertzler, obviously, the uh, manager of Brighton right now, 31 freaking years old. I cannot believe it. Uh, I mean, as you look at my white beard and everything, but this tactic, the creator did test it with Manchester City, getting 97 points, doing fairly well. I'm pretty sure, yeah, Holland had 35 goals in the Premier League alone, so not too bad. But we are going to test it out with our three teams of Liverpool and Aston Villa in the Premier League and our championship side of Ipswich Town as usual. But if we look at Man City's season on the tester itself, runners up in the Champions League, tops of the Premier League, winners of the Super Cup, runners up in the FA Cup, winners of the Carabao Cup, it was a good season. Let's just hope our three teams can come anywhere close. Well, the points aren't really there, but I think the placement is. I mean, and I say that, but Aston Villa, 84 points is fantastic. About seven points or thereabouts above usual. Liverpool at 83 is right around average, but 88 goals for Aston Villa, 96 goals for Liverpool. They did fairly well. I would just like to see them have a little more points to them. But there could be many reasons why they don't have the points. Usually, I would say a winner of the Premier League is at least 90 points or thereabouts. This time, a bit down from here, which is why I'm saying they're a little low, to me at least, in a lot of the tests we've done. But if we look at Aston Villa, since they're in the tops, look at their domestic cups. Carabao Cup, fourth round, 2-5 to five against Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town crushing Aston Villa right there. But FA Cup final, they got to the final through Liverpool in the semis, but they got to the final 4-2 over Arsenal. There's a trophy. And trophy number three comes against Fiorentina 2-1 in the Europa Conference League. So overall, I would definitely say this is a fantastic tactic to look at for Aston Villa. I mean, topping the Premier League, absolutely phenomenal. Winners of the Conference League, winners of the FA Cup. They did get beat out in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup, but it's by a team that using the same tactics. So I can't really fault it there, but two to five, that hurts. So squad stats, you can see 28 goals for Ali Watkins, 27 for Ramsey, not bad at all. 18 assists for Zaniello is also not bad, 15 for Dinian McGinn, and then average rating Jacob Ramsey with a 737. And as we switch over to Liverpool, they did make it to the Carabao Cup final. Unfortunately, Manchester City crushing them 4-1 to one in the final. They did beat out Bournemouth. They lost in the away leg, but still getting to that final. Yeah, I mean, it gets its final. And as we saw, they were beaten out by Aston Villa in the FA Cup semifinals 2-3. to three. But they make it to the Europa League final. They absolutely handily crushed AS Roma 6-1. to one. So there's a trophy for them. Overall, Premier League, about average. Very nice goal tally. We've definitely seen higher, though. But winners of the Europa League, fantastic. FA Cup semifinals, not bad. Carabao Cup runner-up, not bad either. As we take a look at their squad, 29 goals for Nunez, 23 for Salah, 21 for McAllister. Very well done. Nice and spread around. 25 assists for Zobazlai, 21 for Salah. Wow. Gakpo. Trent only has nine, interestingly enough. But Mohamed Salah with a 7-5-0. Data hub wise for Aston Villa, the goals just weren't there for them, but it, it, I mean, you can see attacking wise, it's very nice. Defensively, they got some missing pieces, a little bit lower than Liverpool, but and we'll see that in a minute. But overall, they covered most of the bases. 2.32 goals per game uh, for Aston Villa, 1.03 conceded, 1.13 xG against those. Defensive pieces are actually a little bit better than their average. And as we take a look at Liverpool, you can see, I mean, attacking through and through is very nice to see. I mean, defensively, actually not as good as, as Aston Villa had. A little bit higher on this side, a little bit lower on that side. But, I mean, they still get 2.53 goals per game. 1.21 conceded, 1.14 XG against is still pretty nice. Premier League stats, Aston Villa with 2.21 points per game. Liverpool with 2.18. Uh, most goals, Liverpool with first 96 goals to 88 Aston Villa, 80 for Tottenham. So they did fairly well. But again, we have seen tactics that have done a little bit better on the attacking side. It could be anything from, you know, an injury here and there or something happened this season. But the data just shows that attacking side, it's still attacking, just not as attacking as some of the others. Few shots against Liverpool with 342 in fourth. Aston Villa in seventh with 363. Most possession, 55% for Liverpool, 54 for Aston Villa. Most dribbles made, Aston Villa in first with 757. 756, one down for Liverpool. Uh, most tackles made, Aston Villa do make the list with 841, but most shots for Liverpool with 721, 649 for Aston Villa. I'm not even going to leave you in suspense for the championship side of Ipswich Town. 101 points, 112 goals. They did very well. 
Domestically, as they beat Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup fourth round, they get to the semifinals, lose out to Manchester City, not by much. And they do lose out in the FA Cup fifth round to Sheffield Wednesday. Overall, championship is where it's at. Usually is. I mean, they got to the semifinals in the Carabao Cup, which is fantastic. Manchester City just be seen, dropped them out right there. Uh, FA Cup, eh, it's about standard. Squad-wise, they never use a full squad, interestingly enough. But goals, you got 13 for Connor Chaplin, Marcus Harness with 13, and then George Hurst all the way down with four. Assists, 18 for Leif Davis, 17 for Marcus Harness, and Marcus Harness actually gets a 7-3-1. Championship stats, Ipswich in first with 2.2 points per game. Most goals, of course, in first, only by one, though, 112, and that is after the playoff push. Ipswich obviously not in that, but fewer shots against in third with 374. Most possession, Ipswich in seventh with 54%. Most dribbles made in first with 937, and most shots for 803. So let us take a look at the tactic itself. You can see the midfield, just is, it's very interesting. But sweeper keeper in support is where we start. Inverted wingbacks on the left and the right in support. Ball playing defenders in defend. A libero in the support central spot. Wingers in support on the left and the right. Mark specific positions, I'm assuming DLDR like usual. Two shadow strikers in attack. And a pressing forward in support. Attacking mentality in possession, attacking with his narrow approach plays pass in his space. Focus played on the left and the right. Passing directness is shorter. Tempo is higher. Low crosses and run at defense. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute quickly and roll it out. And then out of possession, a high press line of engagement, a much higher defensive line. Trigger press much more often. Prevent your goalkeeper distribution. Get stuck in, step up more, and invite crosses. So how did it do for our three teams overall? I mean, as usual, pretty nice. Ipswich coming in first. I won't say it's a huge tally in points. They're, up, I mean, this these days they're usually in the 90s, so 101 is pretty nice, but we have definitely seen better. Goals-wise, we've seen them in the 120s, but 112 is definitely nothing to shake a stick at. Aston Villa and Liverpool, if we take a look at them, I mean, clearly Aston Villa doing a fantastic job. But again, the point tally, I mean, it was a down season for the Premier League. Usually you're seeing them in the, like 92 points as the winners to 97 points or thereabouts. Liverpool, 83, you're on average of what you usually get, but 96 goals is pretty nice, so it definitely has its attacking prowess to it. No question about it. Definitely take a look. And the defensive pieces were pretty solid as well. So, I mean, you have that huge midfield that it's open, but at the same time, you're getting the work done on both both ends of the pitch. So definitely one to take a look at uh, if you have, you know, more attacking midfielders than actual line midfielders. So take a look. It seems to work fairly well, in the, at least in this save. If you've tried it, let us know how it worked for you in the comments below. But that is it for me, Safian FM, for the Football Manager blog channel, saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy.